Coming up today, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been given the new title as chairman of the ruling Workers' Party. The move is expected to consolidate Kim's grip on power. A mass week-long boycott of a British company that manufactured toxic humidifier sterilizer begins in South Korea today. Many stores and retailers have already pulled the firm's products from their shelves. First, a provincial mayor who led a tough-talking presidential campaign in the Philippines is expected to be declared the winner. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Tuesday, May 10th here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been given a new title. He's now chairman of the ruling Workers' Party. He was previously first secretary, which had been the highest position in the party. The news was announced late Monday as the party's four-day congress wrapped up its official agenda in Pyongyang. Connie Kim starts us off. North Korea's highest political gathering in nearly four decades came to a close on Monday, giving the North Korean leader a new title. North Korea's Korean Central Television reported Monday, Kim Jong-un was elected as a chairman of the ruling Workers' Party of Korea. The title Kim will be given was a highlight of the convention, as Pyongyang said it will give the leader the party's top title. Kim's promotion to the party's chairman is seen as a move to dominate the party and consolidate his power as a young Kim has been seeking to secure the legitimacy of the ruling Kim family's dynasty. In addition, four media that were allowed access inside the convention has reported that the party now has five standing members of the Workers' Party of Korea. Kim Jong-un, Kim Young-nam, Hwang Byung-seo, Choi Ryong-hae and Park Bong-ju. This means two additional party members, Party Secretary Choi ryong hae and Premier Park Bong-ju have been added to the standing committee of the Workers' Party of Korea's political bureau. The four-day convention kicked off with an opening speech from Kim Jong-un, followed by a two-day briefing of the party's works. On the following day, Pyongyang adopted a statement that said it will pursue economic development and boost the state's self-defensive nuclear force, both in quality and quantity, supporting the so-called Pyongjin policy spearheaded by leader Kim Jong-un. The North's highest political gathering has come to an end, but the general consensus seems to be that the young Kim used this rare party convention to reaffirm North Korea's position as a nuclear state, which will further isolate it from the international community. Connie Kim, Arirang News. President Park and Hay has once again called for joint efforts from the international community in curbing North Korea's nuclear ambitions. She says the regime's latest declaration as a nuclear weapon state is a serious threat to global peace and security. China and Japan shared a similar opinion. Song Ji Sun reports. A challenge to global peace and security. That's how President Park Geun-hye assessed North Korea's declaration as a nuclear weapon state. Meeting with Kuwait's Prime Minister Jaber al Mubarak al Hamad al Sabah on Monday, President Park said North Korea's fourth nuclear test, long range missile launch, and now its latest claim pose serious threats beyond the peninsula and the region. Jaber pledged Kuwait's support in implementing sanctions on Pyongyang in response to Park's call to join international efforts in denuclearizing the North. Over in Beijing, China noted Pyongyang's action in words of pushing forward its nuclear ambitions as anachronistic, reiterating its stance on non-proliferation. Realizing denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula, maintaining peace and stability, and resolving the peninsula's nuclear issue through negotiation and dialogue are in all sides' interests, and we hope all parties can make efforts in this regard to accord with the trend of the times. Japan also responded promptly. At a daily briefing, Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said North Korea must urgently implement all UN Security Council resolutions. Tokyo and Washington also vowed on Monday to rub up their military alliance against North Korea's continued nuclear threats in a meeting between Japan's Defense Minister Ken Nakatani and U.S. Navy Secretary Ray Mabus. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News. 
Now, a British journalist was detained by North Korea while covering the Workers' Party Congress and was eventually expelled for his reporting. The reporter and his team are now in Beijing. While they are out of harm's way, the BBC has expressed disappointment over the deportation. Guan Soa reports. A BBC reporter who was in Pyongyang before and during the 7th Workers' Party Congress has been expelled from North Korea along with his team. The CNN reporter who first reported the news said on his Twitter feed that BBC Tokyo correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes had been detained and then expelled by North Korea for reporting deemed, quote, disrespectful of leader Kim Jong-un, as North Korean authorities had said during a press conference. Although it's not exactly known which parts of the reports the North objects to, the stories highlighted aspects of life in Pyongyang, and one of them referred to North Korea's leader as corpulent. The correspondent, a producer and a cameraman, arrived in North Korea prior to the Congress, accompanying Nobel Prize laureates on a research trip. The BBC said the reporter was questioned for eight hours on the weekend and made to sign a statement before his release. It's not a big exaggeration to say that reporting on the Workers' Party Congress hasn't been any easier for the journalists who traveled all the way to Pyongyang for the once-in-a-generation event than it has been for us here in Seoul across the border. Journalists with the more than 100 international media outlets in the North Korean capital had to be content with watching the sessions on screens outside of the venue instead of being allowed inside, despite having been invited by the regime to attend. It's North Korea. I'm happy that we are here and able to even stand at the front. But at the same time, yeah, it's frustrating not to get any access or any information. We, we, what is happening there? So it's like, it's interesting because we have to write about that. But. Reporters found themselves touring locations such as an electric cable factory, a silk mill and the Pyongyang subway, places the North Korean regime apparently wanted them to cover even more than the proceedings of the rare Congress. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Now, families of the victims, civic groups and local retailers are set to kick off a week-long campaign to boycott Oxy products in South Korea. The Korean public is furious over suspicions the British firm sold humidifier sterilizers that resulted in numerous deaths and illnesses here. Many local stores and convenience chains have already begun taking the company's products from their shelves. Lee Min Young reports. Growing public outrage over the oxyhumidifier disinfectant scandal is starting to take a heavy toll on the company, and sales of the oxy products are likely to dip down even further. While mass consumer strikes against oxy Reckitt Benkiser's products are rapidly expanding through social media, families of the victims and some 50 civic groups announced they will stage a week-long public boycott of oxy products starting from Tuesday. During the period, they will be calling upon citizens as well as businesses to take part in the boycott, staging protests, distributing informative flyers and engaging in online activities. They will collectively work towards institutional improvement and litigation, as well as team up with international organizations. Convenience stores across the country have also pledged to pull all products made by Reckon Pinkiezer Korea from their shelves or scale back their supplies. One major convenience store chain, GS25, said it will stop placing new orders from Oxy and return remaining stocks back to Oxy headquarters. CU also said that they have already stopped ordering products from the company since the end of last month and agreed to clear Oxy from their shelves until Friday. This comes on the tail of similar announcements made by major supermarket chains, including Lot Day Mart, an online market such as G Market, Auction and Elevenst. Meanwhile, investigations into numerous deaths caused by the toxic humidifier sterilizers are widening with the former CEO of the Korean branch of Oxy Record Benkiser Shin hyun -woo, summoned for a second time on Monday. Lee Min Young, Arirang News. Now, as a follow-up to Min Young's report, employees of SK Chemical have been summoned by the prosecutor's office as part of investigations to find out their involvement in providing a chemical called PH. 
uh, MG uh, to the manufacturers of the deadly oxy products. The uh, chemical is used in septic tank uh, absurgence and antiseptics and it can cause lung damage if inhaled. Now, more details are emerging about a revolutionary anti-corruption bill. The legislation is aimed at tackling a culture of indirect bribery among people of influence. For more on the so-called Kim Young ran Act and how it's being put together, Guan jang reports. A new law is currently being put together that aims to close loopholes that allow indirect bribing of public officials and people of influence. The Anti-Corruption Civil Rights Commission announced on Monday the specific limits on what gifts can be given to public officials, journalists and private school staff. For example, they can only be treated to meals worth at most around 25 US dollars. Any gifts they receive cannot be worth more than around $43, and cash gifts, usually given during family events such as weddings and funerals in Korea, are limited to a maximum of $86. Those found violating these limits are subject to up to three years in prison or a fine calculated at five times the worth of the money or gift that was received. This act will not apply to those public officials who receive money and gifts, but to those who give them as well. This culture of giving and taking is something that needs to be comprehensively considered. There are also limits on lecture fees for ministers, set at around $340 an hour. Journalists and school staff can receive up to $860 an hour. The bill passed the National Assembly in March 2015 and is scheduled to come into force in September, but it needs to be approved by the Constitutional Court first, where it has been challenged. A petition has been filed by the Korean Bar Association, arguing that the scope of this law is too wide and infringes on the Constitution, especially on the freedom of the press, as the law also specifically targets journalists. Civic infringements are also of a concern, as the law stipulates spouses are to report on any violation of the law. The top court has said it will deliver its verdict before the September deadline. Kwon Jang-ho, Arirang News. To keep up the momentum and better help Korean companies benefit from recent agreements reached with Iran, the Korean government will hold an open forum in Seoul on Wednesday to discuss follow-up measures. President Park Geun-hye, along with government officials and business leaders who accompanied the president to Iran last week, will be present at the discussion aimed at expanding the effects of MOUs agreed on with Tehran. Upon returning home with 66 MOUs worth $37 billion, President Park expressed hope that Iran's business opportunities will boost Seoul's exports. The Korean leader also held a similar meeting after her trip to the Middle East last year. An outspoken mayor is set to become the next president of the Philippines as he holds a dominant lead with the vast majority of votes counted following Monday's election. With 88% of the vote counted early Tuesday morning, Davao City Mayor Rodrigo Duterte has secured more than 14.7 million votes according to partial results from the nation's election watchdog. The closest of his four main rivals, a former interior secretary, is trailing far behind with 8.6 million votes. Duterte has been compared to U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump because of his outsider status and no-nonsense comments. He has actually vowed to kill drug pushers and users, shocking many in the nation and his challenges as well. The final results are expected to be announced soon. Staying with international news and the impeachment process against Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff has been thrown into confusion. The acting speaker of the, lowest, the lower house rather, of Brazil has annulled a vote held in the lower house on April 17th, claiming there were flaws in the voting process. He said members of the lower house should not have publicly announced what their position was prior to the vote and called for a new vote. Nevertheless, Brazil's Senate pressed ahead with the impeachment process and said the upper house vote on whether to put Rousseff on trial would be held as scheduled on Wednesday. An international journalist group has released a searchable database of some 200,000 offshore entities that are part of the Panama Papers investigation. The so-called International Consortium of Investigative Journalists says the site went live at 2 a.m. Korea time this morning around 4 hours ago. Visitors can go to the website to see who is behind the different accounts that could be used to evade tax 
and avoid sanctions. It does not include records of bank accounts and financial transactions, emails, passports and other correspondence or phone numbers, though. The ICIJ said it was releasing the information in order to serve the public interest. The papers belong to Panama-based law firm Mossack Fonseca, one of the world's biggest players in the grey zone of shell companies, trusts and other kinds of offshore financing. Well, those are stories we have for you on this Tuesday morning here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you, as always, for watching. We'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. So until next time, goodbye.